please welcome to the stage Midsummer Scream founders and your executive team. Executive Director David Marklin. Executive Producer Gary Baker. Supervising Producer Claire Dunlap. And Creative Director Rick West. Hey guys, uh, who's tired? Yeah. Uh, who's ready for Halloween? Yeah. Wow, I think we kicked it off this weekend, but of course I'm biased. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. Thanks for coming out and being a big part of the Midsummer Scream community. And you're basically all ambassadors for the Halloween community. So please, this season, go out and check out as much Halloween stuff as you can, from the home haunts to the big haunts like that scary farm. <laughs> And uh, yeah, we'll be hopefully seeing you soon. Gary, say something fun. Oh my God, what a weekend this has been. You, just incredible, and incredible numbers. Uh, I looked out of my hotel and I saw that entire bridge full, four lines deep. Uh, anyway. Nobody's cheering for that. We. <laughs> thanks for your patience, but thanks for coming. Yeah, absolutely. We more than exceeded our numbers for this year, and I just want to thank all of you for coming out and supporting us for all these years. So, Also, just a quick shout out to our tech team that puts all this together. My business partner, Jim Call, my godson, Anthony Call, they run all the tech. So, congratulations, guys, and thank you. Oh my gosh, thank you guys so much for braving those lines and being as patient as you possibly can be. We had every single mag open that we po that, the, <laughs> that the convention center has. We had a full staff. And that's just what happens to take this many bodies and move them through magnetometers. So we really appreciate your patience. We're so glad you withstood the heat. We're so glad you're here. Also want to give another shout out to our white bats who are just the bomb diggity. Thank you guys. I ask you the same thing every year. Did we do you proud? Was it homecoming? Are you exhausted? We are. Yeah, we are. We're going to sleep tomorrow. Thank you guys so much for coming out and spending your weekend with us. Uh, as usual, it's exciting. We are all very proud up here, and we are all very humbled that you think so highly of this event. We are nothing without you, without the fans. And, you know, there's a lot of ugliness out in the world. A lot of ugliness out in the world. Seeing what we have done here this weekend with you guys coming through, acting as a big family, you know what? The real monsters are out there. In here, this is love. An amazing weekend from the haunted mansion to universal to dark harbor to Nas to christine mcconnell did you guys have fun Woo! all right then this is it the finish line who's ready for scary farm Woo! we love you guys we love you guys so much let's do it again next year Woo! gentlemen, we come to the finish line of Midsummer Scream 2019. Let's do this! There are few things more synonymous with Halloween than Not Scary Farm. For 46 years, guests have ventured into the fog-filled streets of Ghost Town, looking to get the poison berry juice scared out of them as they make their way past lurking monsters and through menacing mazes. Not Scary Farm is an annual tradition that attracts beer singers from all over the world. 
its history and importance to the Hunt community everywhere are unparalleled. This fall marks the 47th season of Not Scary Farm, and as always, there are new thrills and chills for store for its dedicated fans. Here now are some of the most titling hosts you've ever had. A host for this presentation, give it up for Knott's Berry Farm's own Jeff Tucker. Well, hello everyone! <laughs> Welcome to Midsummer Scream! All right, I am Jeff Tucker. I am from Not Scary Farm, the greatest place in the world. Have you seen this uh, petition to move Halloween to another day? Well, I'm putting up my own petition. We will have Halloween every day. Who, who would sign that? All right. Fantastic, I would sign it twice, because I break the law. Okay. <laughs> All right, we're here to talk about Not Cherry Farm 2019. We have a few things, we have a lot of material to get through with some great people. I'm gonna talk really fast because we have so much to get to. Okay, first up, if you are not in jail after storming Area 51, <laughs> who's gonna storm Area 51? We do the run. If you're not in jail after that, here are the dates for Not Scary Farm 2019. There they are. And tickets are on sale right now. So if you're on your phone buying tickets, I won't get upset. Because that's what I'm supposed to do, sell as many tickets as I can so I can go to camp. Okay. So tickets are on sale now. Also, Fright Lane, Fast Lane, and all the other stuff that you want to do for Not Scary Farm 2019 are on sale right now. What we're going to do today is we're going to take a deep dive into two of the returning mazes this year. Thanks, Dad. Okay. And uh, we're going to go in-depth like you've never seen before. If a maze had a DVD commentary, this would be it today. Okay. Uh, we're going to talk about two mazes. For the last two weeks on Twitter, we have been asking for questions uh, of the fans. Is the slide coming up of the, the one with the... Uh, Scott, am I off track already? <laughs> there it is. Scott's the, the guy in control. I have no control because I'm a dummy. Okay. This is the Q&A with the Not Scary Farm Design Team. Send your questions on Twitter using KSF Midsummer. We're still taking them. So if you have a question during the panel, Magically, you can send the question to marketing. If they like it, they will give it to me, interactive TV, right? Okay, it's better than Avatar. All right. <clears throat> First up here, before we get to that, so get out your phones and start uh, Twittering and tweeting. Uh, we're gonna talk about the uh, upcoming announcement event at Not Scary Farm. Anybody been to that? There it is, folks. There's the date. Check it out. August 29th at 8 o'clock, reservations are available. August 9th at 5 p.m., normally you send an email and you might get it or you might not. There is the information right there. Take a picture of it with your phone. Get that information. Tickets are for the event are free, but you must have a reservation. So if you're going, shove hands, who's going? At that night, we will reveal everything about Not Scary Farm 2019 that's worth knowing. And. Uh, Today, we, they gave tickets to the first 25 who got in. Did you get a ticket? Who got a ticket? Dance around like Grandpa Joe. Come on. All right. Thank you, Mom. Okay. I'm, I'm just kidding. My parents are dead. Okay. They, uh, they disciplined me once. Once. <laughs> That's dark even for me. Okay. All right, folks, the first returning maze and the subject of our first in-depth discussion is watch the monitors right there. Maze to right, park 46. Maze to right, park 46, come in. Yeah, hey, what's up? There's a disturbance reported at the abandoned dark right. Please report to the location. Yeah, yeah, I'm on it.
That guy was so upset. He kept his hand inside the car at all times. Please welcome to the panel. Here they are, the Vice President of Entertainment, Mr. Ken Parks. Live Entertainment Producer, Eric Mix. Designer to the Stars, John Cook. Designer to the Other Stars, John Asprin. Audio Guru, Dan Biranowski. All right, fellas, take it away. Here it is, the deep dive about Dark Ride. Midsummer, how you doing? We're very, very excited to be able to kind of uh, show you guys some of the behind the scenes of, of Dark Ride. Has anybody experienced it? Yeah. yeah. For those of you, wow, that's only a half the room. The other half, <laughs> Dark Ride um, is a story of an old carnival that was closed down, and all the freaks, the clowns, the sidewalk performers, they were all kicked out onto the streets, being shunned by society. They returned to their home and they took the old Castle of Chaos ride and they turned that into their to the new home. And they were gonna def defend it against anybody that would uh, come in and, and expose this encampment, really, that they have set up in this, in this ride. And um, one of the really, really neat things about this maze is the production and how everything is tied together, all the animatronics, the lighting, everything ties together and is synced through our show control system. And it's all driven by the heartbeat of the maze, which is the audio design. And audio is something that we kind of overlook. Sorry, Dan. <laughs> so we wanted to really highlight that and be able to, to talk about it. Cool. So uh, when John told me he wanted to do a maze that was based in a dark ride, I was kind of stoked because dark rides sound bad. <laughs> so it would make my job really easy. But then we started going through the... Um, we started going through what he wanted from a sound design perspective and it was really ambitious and really cool. And um, there's some pieces to it that make it unique. So the attraction has, um, you're on the ride, so there's tracks on the floor. Um, and then there's sections of the maze that are backstage of the castle of Chaos Ride. So when you're on stage following the tracks on the ground, that's when you're supposed to hear kind of the rundown, broken attraction audio. And then when you make your way backstage and then you hit the big finale room, you're backstage, so the audio is actually supposed to be really clear and, and clean and, and hit really hard. So we had to sync the entire attraction audio for both the onstage and offstage. So whether you were walking, following the tracks, or you worked your way backstage, you always stayed in sync with the main uh, music track that you hear throughout that. And so that was pretty challenging, but it was really fun, it was really ambitious. And um, beyond that, on a dark ride, there's a lot of um, jump, like pop-up scares, you know, the little heads that pop up and they make a silly clown laugh and stuff. So we got to create all that from scratch. We didn't take any sound effects from existing, um, from existing props or anything. So just bring friends into the audio booth and tell them to act like a lunatic <laughs> and hit record. <laughs> And, and, and cut it up and take the best of the best. And uh, so I'll pull people like John in all the time. I think I, I just sat there and yelled, die, 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 he did. like a hundred times. <laughs> yeah. It was very... Uh... And yeah. then they started recording. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's a, a scene where there's a... Um, I guess it's like an executioner and he's like spinning a rack and he's laughing <laughs> and it's John just... <laughs> that was the best we could come up with. Audio day is a good day. day or whatever. Yeah. Audio day is always a good time. Um, what you're looking at on the screen right now is uh, the Pro Tools session from Dark Ride. Pro Tools is a recording software if you're not familiar. Um, because we have to record and edit all the so uh, sounds you hear, um, we do that in, in this program. And you can see a bunch of the file names on there. Um, there's some good stuff in there. I think there's a rabid monkey in there somewhere. Um, but specifically, if you look towards the top, you'll see that it says Dark Ride, background music good, and Dark Ride, uh, background music bad. And we've never played this for anybody in a public forum, but uh, we're gonna play these for you so you can hear what they sound like when you're on one or the other. Um, 
So uh, Scott, if, if you want to play the Basically, hold on, before you go, I, I, this guy sat there and made sure that those two lined up, made, so when they play throughout the maze, it's not fighting each other, so hats off to sit there and do all that tedious work. Yeah, good job, man. Um, yeah, so basically we sit down, John and I sit down in a room, we go through the entire uh, design of the attraction before it's ever built, and we develop a list and the list will include elements like that, and then we'll go in the studio and make that stuff happen. Um, sometimes the list has some weird stuff in it, and, and we'll throw Easter eggs in the attraction. Um, there's, a, there's a wizard in this, uh, in this maze, and he's fighting, there's a big dragon up on the ceiling, and this wizard kind of floats up and down, and for that, uh, our lovely vice president of entertainment, Ken Parks, <laughs> did the honors. So these guys are always putting Easter eggs into their mazes. What they didn't know, I think we it was my first year at Knott's, I think, yeah. right? And so uh, what they didn't know is I put an Easter egg into their maze. Uh, I used to work for the Walt Disney Company, and when, as an actor once in a while, if they ever needed a Merlin, uh, I would do all of these big special events, right? So uh, I never did it in the park, but if they needed audio recordings, anything like that. So uh, they were one day, I think John was saying, oh, we need a wizard and we think we're going to, I was like, oh, I'll do it for you. So this is, that's a picture of a guy acting like he's acting. And uh, if you've never seen what somebody using a microphone looks like, that's what that is. But uh, anyway, uh, so this is my Merlin voice. Well, there's a vicious fire-breathing dragon. I shall smite him. <laughs> so, there it is, and we're waiting for the cease and desist from Disney at any moment. <laughs> but good times now. Let's keep going. Yeah, yeah. So if you're not familiar with the Walt Disney Company, where Ken used to work, they do things. Um, they, they own everything. Yeah, so... Uh, I still have the chip. So... so uh, yeah. I try to record that energy, and that's tough. That takes hours. And... Uh, and then we edit it all down, we cut it down to, to basically make sure that it matches the tone of the attraction. This attraction's really fun. If you haven't gone through it, make your way to Knott's this year and make sure you experience it. Because um, there's something special about clowns. I think we all kind of can accept this fact. And this attraction, um, you know, it, the fact that it takes place in the boardwalk area of Knott's and also is a dark ride that contains clowns. It's like you can't even escape it when you walk out the doors. You're in a boardwalk full of a buttload more clowns and they're all awful and they all hate you. So make your way there, check it out because uh, if nothing else, maybe this will give you a chance to listen for some of those Easter eggs and, and realize stuff as you guys have walking through it and I think it'll be pretty evident if you pay attention to it. Hey, hey Dan. <laughs> How long does it take to put together a maze, uh, audio maze like uh, Dark Ride? Uh, I think uh, probably about a month. Um, you know, we have to we have to plan everything out, schedule everything out, and then we do a sound check. And the sound check is always super fun, but there's no way to sound check for you know having hundreds of people in a room. I, we work in a little studio, and so when we put the audio into the attraction, a lot of times we make tweaks and make changes, and sometimes it's not just for the guests, sometimes it's for the actual scare actors, because if you hear a girl scream, like, ah, and that happens every second for a nine hour shift, you'll probably uh, jump off a building. So, um, so
so, so sometimes we make tweaks, uh, you know, to make the attraction better for talent as well. So it's, it's a long process, but I think in the end, you know, uh, the best part about doing what we do is that if there's anything that we do find that we need to change that's drastic, it's, you know, this one will be back next year and you guys can come see it and see what we change. And what's great about what Dan does is that if he does his job right and it's so seamless, you just assume it's organic and it didn't take anybody thinking about that. So when people come out of the maze, they go, did you see when the big clown got me? Yeah. Did you chair the audio in that room? Yeah. And when your friends awful. go, no, audio, because it's just how the maze is supposed to sound. But that's all created from scratch. So they do an incredible job. Are we going to talk, talk about what's new for Dark Ride? Yeah, I think so. Would you like to know what's new for Dark Ride? All right, so with, uh, with Dark Ride, you know, like some of the other mini mazes, this is one of, one of my personal favorites, and so it was an honor to, to kind of bring to you what we have in store. So you guys ready to hear what we have in store for 2019? I think so, right? Okay, so let's dive right into it. So. For for this year, for for uh, Dark Ride, we want to introduce to you two new rooms. And so, as John opened up and talking about Dark Ride and how it's an, a, an abandoned carnival ride, what we're introducing to you for this year are two new rooms, undiscovered rooms that just recently uh, was uncovered. Uh, and so, what we want to bring to you, the first one is the surveillance room. And so, it's kind of cool. I mean, you can see on the on, on, on the screen, if you look on the left-hand side, you'll see the, uh, the what we had in, uh, in the previous years uh, and what we're doing for the new uh, year. And it doesn't seem like it's a lot, but, you know, if you go to the next slide, let's let's dive right into it. There's actually a lot of cool meat and potatoes in this one. So um, I know we, we sort of omitted <laughs> a couple of lines in there. Um, Can't give it all away yet. It's been redacted. Yeah, but um, what we're doing here is uh, we're aiming for bringing a, 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 a real huge interactive element to uh, to this portion of the maze, and uh, that's a surveillance room. So just if you think of a, a, of, a of an abandoned carnival ride, obviously you would think of like a security room or a surveillance room. And so we uncovered a surveillance room, and some of the things that you'll find in the surveillance room is obviously the security cameras and old data technology like CRT monitors. Um, you'll also see like wired keyboards and such. And so what we want to do is is to try to um, of, of course, obviously, bring in the surveillance room. But the catch to this is that there is a whole level of crazy interactive elements in here, and it's it's and it's all natural. And one of the things that we're known for that every time John and I, uh, you know, work on projects, we're always thinking about Easter eggs. And so, for those of you that have gone through the maze uh, in previous years and notice uh, a few of the Easter eggs in the maze, this is a, we're kind of picking up where we left off with those Easter eggs, and without not letting too much out of the bag, there's a lot of elements in there from, you know, you could turn a key possibly, or maybe push a button, or find something in the room, and that room will interact with you. Um, and you'll see a lot of ties into some of the elements of our other mazes, which is kind of cool. And you get a chance to kind of sort of see what that room would look like. You'll notice just, it, you know, as small as it is, it's definitely packs a lot of punch in there. And I think that you guys will have fun in there. Um, John, I'm just concerned that the phone in there was from, like, when I was a kid and now it's vintage. <laughs> so, I know. It's a dark ride in my head, thanks. <laughs> And so the, the next room that we have is a gift shop. And so, I you know, exit right? through the gift shop, folks. I know. I don't know if you've ever heard of the Walt Disney Company. <laughs> I know. Right? I know. Well, like, uh... <laughs> Can you say clarify, something? it's not an actual gift shop. Yeah. No, that's okay. We'll sell some stuff, but we're not going to sell it there. They'll still try to kill you. So it's okay. We never miss a retail opportunity. <laughs> so what we wanted to do with that was to uh, sort of wrap up the experience. So, you know, as you go through Dark Ride, 
you know, you, you, you go through all these different layers and different textures uh, that the team created and, um, you know, obviously what we wanted to do was to finish up the experience and obviously you're going in through a an abandoned ride like many other rides out there, you know, the ride ends with a nice little cool gift shop, right? And so that's something that uh, that Eric, our producer, and Ken wanted to throw out and they, they put together this crazy idea of, of putting together this gift shop and so um, like the surveillance room, there's some interactive elements in here as well. Uh, but we really wanted to capture the essence of your experience coming to a close, you're ready to leave, and there's a different level of, uh, uh, of, uh, of a tone that's in here. You know, for the most part, dark ride, it's very fluorescent, very bright. So we wanted to sort of shift the gears on it and sort of bring it down a couple, uh, and almost like a little juxtaposition of what you would experience throughout the maze and as you wrap up and end your experience. And so, some cool elements, but you know, with that being said, uh, without uh, without adding any cool new stuff to it, you know, you, oh, and this slide right here is kind of will give you a little overview of what it sort of looks like. But with every new uh, addition that we're bringing to our mazes at Not Scary Farm, what we'd also like to introduce to you, you guys ready to see some new characters that we're introducing to you guys? Yeah? All right, so let's, let's introduce to you Smiley Sam <laughs> and Baby Fool. Baby Fool is so good. And, uh, you, you know, right? That, that, that's actually me, so. <laughs> Selfie. Selfie. Woke up out. this way. Yeah. So with, with Smiley Sam and Baby Fool, one of the things that we love doing at Not Scary Farm is throwing Easter eggs. And what we wanted to do is, is to recognize the whole idea that our mazes really are brought to life through our talent and brought to life through our mazes. And so, you know, we really wanted to capture and play into and, and introduce to everyone two new characters uh, that you'll see at, at the final uh, scene in the gift shop. And the first one obviously is Smiley Sam, and the second one is Baby Fool. Uh, with Smiley Sam, you know, she is, or, uh, you know, a cashier uh, that never had any clue that Dark Riot even closed, and so she's still trying to sell the last merchandise to everyone. And then, of course, you have uh, you know, the whole concept of Dark Ride being an abandoned ride. Well, you know, for many reasons, you know, aside from it being abandoned, you know, there's also, unfortunately, a little baby that was abandoned with it as well. And this bit, this character is Baby Fool, who was raised by our carnies in the in the carnival ride and grew up to become Baby Fool. So, check out the slippers, though. <laughs> yes, I'm jealous of whoever gets to be that talent. <laughs> I know. John, I like the idea that a, a couple with a new baby got off the ride and they're like, do we have something with us? Now we're fine, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get to that parking lot. I know. Well, at, at any rate, that's, uh, those are our two new characters and we hope that you guys enjoy uh, Dark Ride this year. All right, folks. This sort of speaks to also what we've been doing. Not only have we been connecting the scare zones uh, with the mazes so that they all kind of live in this common narrative, but the other thing we've been doing is if we do have a returning maze, we keep plussing it. We sort of feel like it's never done. We always want to go back so that even if it returns, that we give you guys something new and exciting to look forward to. So, which I think is going to come up. But yeah, thank you for coming back. We appreciate you all. So, I think that's going to tie into what we're doing next, too. Yeah. All right, you ready to hear the next returning maze for 2019? And we're gonna talk about this one in depth in a way that you've never heard before. Scott, roll that beautiful bean footage. Special Ops infected in the house. Well, here are the guys that made it. Tell us about it, fellas. This is where it all began for us, right? Y yeah. Yeah. Special Ops infected. Did anybody get to check it out in Camp Snoopy? 
There you go. That was a rough year for us, wasn't it? <laughs> You know, I think it was all worth it, though, for sure. I mean, it was a... Uh, man, Camp Snoopy is where, where we started and where we, uh, you know, we it, we had a lot of fun. I mean, that's all I can say. I mean, it was crazy. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> but um, for, for those of you who did not get to experience it in Camp Snoopy, we had the great idea of taking over the, the Camp Snoopy area and trying to transform it into the zombie apocalypse and create this really, really... Uh, deep and fun interactive experience. Yeah, uh, you, you know, it, I think with that experience, so I think it all started even before that, before Camp Snoopy, and that was probably our influences, right? So, you know, <laughs> it kind of goes without saying, we're, we're nerds at heart, you know, I think one of the things that we take huge pride in is, is the fact that we have all these fanboy moments and nerd moments when we're out in our think tank sessions, and that's really where it all starts. That's really where it all came from, and you can kind of see you know, sort of what influenced us from the TV shows and the movies and then the video games, obviously, and things even outside our four walls, like paintball and aerosol, was really what influenced the most, but this has had, this had to be it, right, John? What influenced us the most? Man, uh, yeah, we we are, we're fans, we actually met playing paintball and stuff, and yeah. we, we uh, yeah. you know, we are big fans of video games, but at the end of the day, we're haunters, and we love haunted houses, so we saw an interesting opportunity that we hadn't seen done on a large scale like that to kind of gamify a maze experience. Yeah. And to make it more engaging and, and more than just a passive walkthrough attraction. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think one of the, uh, one of the uh, unique concepts that, that Infected had, uh, and the biggest difference that um, when we're tooling around with ideas, um, was the simple fact that, you know, with Infected, you know, we took elements from 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 not only a maze, but we also took elements from the streets, you know, and all these things that we learned from both of those types of venues, those those types of um, experiences, we sort of came up with a hybrid that ended up becoming an infected. And and the beautiful thing about infected is if for those of you that have gone through, it's it's a different kind of feeling, right? I mean, you know, you going through a traditional maze, you're sort of put, in, for the most part, in, 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 a, in a role of, say, a victim. But the unique thing about, you know, Special Ops Infected is that, you know, and we were so, like, crazy stoked about it, because we get, you know, jittery just thinking about it, is, is that with Special Ops Infected, we, we were able to turn it all upside down and instead of you being the victim, we were able to have you feel, have that feeling of now you have an opportunity to actually fight back. And, and that was... And really engage into that story. You know, I don't think I've done a combat role through any other maze. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, and, and um, you know, a lot of it had to do with the evolution of the technology. I mean, if, if you guys saw, if you, you know, just looking at the pictures, John, you want to talk about how that all started? Like... Man, yeah. So I guess circling back now to Camp Snoopy, where it all began for us, um, we wanted to, to create this this interactive experience. You know, we saw the big rise in in the first person shooter games. Escape rooms were starting to, to make a, a big impact, and we wanted to try and loop all that into one um, survival experience. So we wanted to flip Camp Snoopy in a matter of, what did we have, 15, 20, 30 minutes maybe? Yeah, about 30 minutes. To turn uh, Camp Snoopy, make Camp Snoopy go away and turn it into this blood curling. Uh, every night of haunt. Every single night of haunt, uh, at the beginning of it and at the end, uh, we were all running around like crazy trying to trying to flip Camp Snoopy uh, to turn it into this zombie apocalypse. Yeah. Hey, can I just point out, that it's my wife up in the slide there. With the gun. <laughs> Looks like Laverne and Shirley were given firearms. <laughs> and, and, and if you uh, if you look at the if, if you look, our fans have fans. <laughs> if you look at some of the the, the technology or, or you know the green uh, you know laser tag weapons, they're they're actually and you could. Sort of see, it's a huge jump for those of you that have gone the last three years, but if you look at the zombie on your upper right hand side, you'll see, you know, these huge sensors, and they're actually, our, our zombies actually have these huge, like, four pound zombie bots. Fanny packs. <laughs> the fanny packs that they're wearing, that they wore at Camp Snoopy. Um, but the awesome thing about it is that, you know, as we, as we, as, as an attraction, as Maze got super popular, uh, you know, the technology sort of changed as well. Um, and you kind of get to see, 
what we are using today. Yeah, so we went from um, the original equipment and we got to almost kind of work with uh, Battle Battle Company to create this new equipment. Uh, what's really cool is, is this technology did not exist until this attraction where it's all through um, IR. So the, the zombies are actually wearing their headbands, they're wireless, and they're communicating with the weapon. So every time you're shooting a zombie, it's actually bursting signal back out to the weapon to collect that data. And that didn't exist. Uh, before this, everything had to be done on Wi-Fi, which uh, I don't know if anybody's tried to use their cell phones at Knott's Berry Farm. <laughs> you know, it's not, no, sorry guys, not the best. But, um, but we were able to kind of eliminate that issue uh, by using this, this IR equipment. Yep. Another, another unique thing uh, about Infected was this whole brag and write scoring system uh, that we introduced. Um, one of the things that, that, actually two of the things that made Infected so unique for us is that we knew our target demographics. Like how many gamers do we have in the house? Do we have any gamers in the house? Yeah. How, how many people know this up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, start, right? So, you know, we have a handful of you Handful, you know, but well, like myself, I, I'm a huge gamer. He's a huge gamer. I'm dropping everything. You're losing all your stuff. Wallet and all. You know, we wanted to introduce, you know, two new aspects that were, were fresh in the minds of haunters, and, and that was this whole idea of fulfillment, this whole idea of accomplishment, and that's something that we were super jazzed about that guests got out of Infected. And a lot of it had to do with our scoreboard system and our, bra our bragging rights system. And on the upper right hand side of your screen, you'll sort of see like an old school snapshot of our scoreboard the first two years when we were at Camp Snoopy. It's got that old school feel. We played Pac-Man, Dig Dug, and you know, Space Invaders, and you get that just that general score in the first player. And then you have to the left in the background, you have a screenshot of our scoring system that you see today. Um, and a lot of it is the whole idea of the accomplishment that we're able to achieve by, by guess as you shoot. And one thing, if you didn't know, um, is that the more headshots you get, your equipment upgrades. So it starts off with semi-automatic, down to a three-shot burst, down to, you know, fully automatic, and so on and so forth. And so, you know, we were able to accomplish that sense of accomplishment there. And then you also had the fulfillment, which is where the scoreboards came in. Because just like any of you that stuck through a video game and were into like a campaign game, and you stuck all the way to the very end all to see the little credits, well, you know, that's sort of what we did with Infected, and we discovered that giving you these nice little call signs was just that extra tabletop that you would get with your friends. Because another thing out of all this, which is really cool, was this whole bounce back feature that Infected brought in. And the bounce back feature was, sure, you went in through the first time and you went with your buddies, your girlfriend, your wife, your husband, your kids, but then you wanted to go a second back, a second time around because you wanted those bragging rights on that, on that ride home. And so, you know, it, it, it was pretty cool. We, we had a chance to see a lot of our guests return back to the mazes and it was, it was, really, it was really fun and super exciting, exciting to see everyone pretty much, you know, having a great time for the most part as they came back uh, to the maze. But that's, that's kind of cool um, with our scoring system, so. I like all the detail and if you sit down and read it, the fresh meat basically says, you are a human backpack being carried by somebody else. That's so good. That's great. Um, ooh, Camp Snoopy. <laughs> oh my, Camp Snoopy just seems to haunt us, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Over again with the infected. This was the, actually the original um, concept plot that we put together for the Camp Snoopy. I went back and forth. Um, so we had one of them starting at the Alpo Alpos, one at the Bravo, and they'd make their way through. Um, and that way we were able to really utilize our number of zombies. So even though we had, I think we had quite a bit out there at a time, 80 or so, it would feel like It, it, it was like, I think like about, uh, I think we had about 104 zombies at our peak. Uh, 104 zombies, which is uh, still to this day the largest cast uh, in not scary farm history. Uh, and so it was an imp a pretty impressive feat, and uh, Camp Snoopy was was where it all began. I think a lot of the, a lot of the things that we uh, opportunities that we wanted to see, obviously, uh, we we couldn't do because of uh, just. It was at Camp Snoopy, right? We really wanted to fully immerse our guests into uh, special ops infected. So you know what we ended up doing was 
we got to bring it backstage to where it is now to be able to fully build out uh, the city that we wanted to create. And uh, by doing so, we opened up a lot more opportunities to, to build in the scares. And I think one of the things that is so uh, fun and unique about Special Ops Infected, you're no longer walking through the maze looking for the scares, right? You're looking for the zombies, and that opens you up to for those for those big, big startle scares. Yeah. And the cool thing about it was, you know, when you go to camp, you know, for the first two years, you had a lot of open... Uh, long range or mid range combat with the zombies. You, it was really hard for our zombies to sort of hide. Uh, you know, you could walk out to, uh, you know, outside of a building and see maybe about 30 or 40 zombies ready to, uh, to, to charge at you. But the great thing with having the ability to, to build our own little city, um, it just, we were able to control the scares. Um, you know, being huge paintball and airsoft heads, you know, we were always looking at our, our lines of fire, how, you know, how guests would interact as they move forward and, and press through a room. And so, you know, we really wanted to take that experience um, to, you know, to the next level. And I think what we ended up doing, it was a natural evolution of our storyline. Uh, and the crazy thing is, and you know, Special Ops Infected, the, I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys know, the, the when we moved over to um, to its current location, uh, we actually were gonna name it, or we're changing name, right? It was in Black Ops Infected, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So, but you know, we ended up sticking to our guns. So no, no pun intended. But <laughs> and uh, we ended up uh, continuing on with our with our story, and and you know, w with our story, you know, there's naturally. Um, We've always been firm believers that, you know, a writer only writes the book, right? And it's a reader that finishes it. And, and for us, you know, we're the writers and our guests, for, the, for those of you that have been through Infected, are, are, are readers. And, you know, we always uh, enjoy the chapters that we write. But, you know, one of the things that we're super proud to announce uh, and, and, uh, and to, to everyone here is that, you know, we've written our final chapter for Special Ops Infected. And um, it's okay because, well, you know, with that being said, one of the things that we wanted to do is we wanted to make sure that we're celebrating something that has turned heads and had put smiles on so many people's faces. And um, yeah, even though it will be its last year for 2019, doesn't mean that it's going out uh, with uh, a whimper. It's definitely going to go out with a headshot this year. Uh, we are ha we are um, uh, adding some new scenes to in Infected, yeah. and uh, yeah. Yeah, John, why don't you walk us through some of the, those new scenes that we have? Cool. You guys ready to see some cool new stuff? All right. All right. Let's jump right into it. So, new for 2019 in Infected's final year. Let's jump right into it. Well, without saying, we'd like to show you, oh, we have some commem commemorative pins, right, Jeff? Yes. <laughs> yes. This comes back to the uh, selling part. <laughs> yeah. So uh, actually, uh, while we're on this, uh, this slide, so we've been working really hard at Not Scary Farm and Not Scary Farm to get ahead of our production and what we're going to do year over year. Um, and we've got the next several years planned out, which is great. Uh, and by doing that, we're able to take advantage and we're starting new lines, uh, John's uh, inspiration. Uh, so we're starting to create pins that will now com commemorate the life of a maze. So this will be the first in the series uh, for the Not Scary Farm Legends uh, pins. And we hope that we'll continue that tradition year over year as we know uh, which attractions will be closing and uh, more to come on that later. So uh, I guess be sure to check out retail, exit at the gift shop. <laughs> Collect them all. A little plug. Collect the whole set. You know, the, the crazy thing is too is that aside from this, you'll be able to also uh, purchase like a like a grave site or like a like a, a graveyard where you get to collect and pull all your pins in as a, for a display one with soapy kind your of own boot right? hill cemetery that will have uh, yeah. cemetery. tributes to all your favorite mazes. I, I have pins like these for my parents. <laughs> Please continue. Pull up, pull up, pull up. <laughs> 2019 changes. So what we're doing is, uh, as you can tell, uh, we are bringing in, we're going to reveal two new changes to Infected for 2019. The first one is is the Hernandez Calico convenience store, uh, and the second one's housed Meatpacking House. 
So the convenience store, what do you think of the convenience store, buddy? I think it has nothing to do with Jen Hernandez's, the props department leads, uh, <laughs> drinking habits, right? <laughs> no, it doesn't. Absolutely not. I don't know what you're talking about. Sorry, Jen. But with that, you know, we wanted to uh, dive into the whole concept of where Infected is at after all these years of, of the zombie infection spreading throughout um, the modern day city of Calico. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm still, I was, Friday when we did this rehearsal and we were talking about the city that this goes through is Calico. I was, you know, that meme, I'm this many days old when I learned that, that, that happened to me right then. No clue, but that's, yeah, just another one of those great Easter eggs that uh, we try and uh, bake into our design. Well, I, I think when John and I were, were, were designing Infected, there's, I think we're up to like 174 Easter eggs and in Infected. A lot of you have like responded back and like hit us up and, and, and give us a count of how many Easter eggs you found, but we're up to, I think, 174 at this time. And, and so, Ma, so Infected is basically, takes place in modern day Calico City. So that's the name if you guys have ever gone through the uh, through the maze and looked at the, the signage that's in there. It says Calico City. So it's kind of cool having a little nerdy moments with that. So, <laughs> But at any rate, going back to the convenience store, this will kind of give you a little overview. Uh, what John and I wanted to do was to sort of uh, dive deeper into where Calico City is at with the zombie infection. And you have this rundown uh, convenience store. Um, and you have some cool new interactive elements in here as well. Uh, the next new item that we have is this whole meat packing freezer house. One of the cool things about the zombie experience, and for those of you that watch zombie movies, I know Johnny and I watch zombie movies all the time, but some of the most intimate moments that resonate with us most when I'm, at least when I'm watching a zombie movie, are those moments where you sort of break up from your group and you're by yourself. What we wanted to do with this, with the zombie attraction is, or with this new feature for 2019, is to divide up the groups into two groups. We're going to split you up. <laughs> One of the things that also is pretty cool about this is that, well, you're so used to the open, mid to long range firefights with the zombies from Camp Snoopy, maybe the mid range firefights and in infected. Now it's going to get up and close and personal, and we're splitting you all up into two groups. So, it's kind of intense. One of the things that I think you'll, you'll, you'll you know, for those of you that saw our influences here, you guys watch Goonies? I'm a huge Goonie fan. Johnny's a huge Goonie fan. And what we wanted to do was add those kind of cool little fun elements, little fanboy moments to where, you know, just make sure that uh, when you do split up that you have, uh, uh, yeah, someone watching your six on this one, so. Um, but yeah, that, that's, that's kind of cool, I think. Uh, the, with those two new features that we're adding uh, for Infected. We hope you guys enjoy it. Um, oh yeah, we have two new characters, right? Yeah, the characters. You're not yeah, you yet, guys ready to see two new uh, characters? Right goods. <laughs> so you have your convenience store cashier that you'll obviously see. You'll see a cool, nice little uh, difference in terms of our zombies that you see in the meat warehouse. Uh, the meat freezer warehouse, and so you know, at Infected, you had so much, so much. Uh, so you had a lot of zombies wearing different types of uh, uh, costumes and wardrobe stuff, things like that of that sort. But Bill uh, and Tim are doing a wonderful job over in our wardrobe and makeup department in helping us put together these two new characters that you'll find in our uh, new additions for Special Ops Infected. So pretty cool. I think just just looking, I mean, this is the first time I've seen these, and I gotta say, it, it's it's incredible, like what a, a detailed job that, that John's doing with these. That's really is what creates these total immersive worlds to have somebody that's gonna sit there and think through every single little detail. The guy's blown away with with the name badge and the dark ride stuff, and that's what kind of connects everything together to to make you lose yourself in these experiences. And one other note that that John's done a great job with. Is with Infected and Dark Ride and being able to tie all the worlds together. I don't know if you're starting to notice that throughout the mazes that are setting in, in a modern time, they're connected. So you'll see the Paranormal Inc. billboard up in Infected, right? Yep. I think yep. in, the, in the new Dark Ride, and you might catch a commercial for a thing or two, or maybe a, a news broadcast with a zombie outbreak. So it's really cool to see all the different mazes throughout Scary Farm all starting to connect into one big universe. It's awesome. I, it, 
I think, I, you know, we, we're not forcing it either, you know, if it's fun, if it makes sense, you know, then it makes sense, you know, we'll, you know, I know Ken and Eric, you know, we, we, we talk about it all the time, but it's just really just having fun with it, I mean, that's at the end of the day, we're just having fun with it, so, kind of cool. I think that's kind of the great thing about the event, right, we, you know, I always talk about how I went for the first time in the 80s and that sweeper was dressed as Freddy Krueger and it scared the crud out of me, you know? And uh, it's just this thing where all of the nerdy fan folks grew up and now we're in charge. So it allows us all to do these kind of things. And we have such a love for the event and uh, and the legacy of it. We just don't want, to, you know, if you're put in charge of that and to be the keepers of it, we, we just don't ever want to disappoint. So we will never let a maze just kind of go away without giving it a little something to say goodbye to it. The one thing that I always find fascinating about that whole story, which we <laughs> didn't talk about, is that it wasn't originally intended for Camp Snoopy. It was actually intended for Soak City. And you were going to get into a van and you would get uh, your mission as you go over to the van and then we thought much better of that when we realized that it was darkness and swimming pools <laughs> There have been lifeguard zombies everywhere <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But Anyway, amazing job you guys. Thank you so much <laughs> Nicely done guys, so that is the last year of Special Ops Infected. You have got to come out and see what they've done and headshots only, right? They'll give it up for them, nice work. All right, we're, we're gonna get to our questions that we got off of Twitter, because everybody on Twitter has an opinion and a question, right? These are always good, right, Jeff? What's that? These questions are always fun, right? Oh, absolutely. Now, marketing, do you guys have questions for me? Did you get any today right now? You want to bring them up? From Price Waterhouse, bring me the questions. <laughs> These have been sealed in a mayonnaise jar on Walter Knott's porch since this morning. Thank you. All right. I have them. Okay. Okay, here we go. From the room. The room? What is your favorite moment? from past mazes? Anyone? So, uh, for me, the first year that I designed an attraction from the ground up was actually infected with John and it was his first year designing an attraction from the ground up for Scary Farm. And the first time that we sound checked, we turned everything on, uh, it was, I don't have any kids, but I assume that's what it feels like. <laughs> it was so, perfect and epic and I don't know if you guys are aware of this but Camp Snoopy is not scary to be in but it was super immersive and uh, that's the feeling that I've been chasing since the first time that I heard that thing turned on. I'll give you mine real quick. It's from Dark Ride. I have a million of them because I've been there forever but I was walking through Dark Ride and you guys remember that that dummy you had in there that was like realistic because I was walking through and I was like why is this woman lying here? We're not open, ma'am, we're not open. Oh, it's a dummy, now I'm the dummy. It was so real. I thought she was like asleep or something. Oh, it was fantastic. Mine would probably be, uh, it was last year, Trick or Treat uh, Lights Out, and we did a, uh, a 5 a.m. walkthrough, no talent, but it was trying out the, the flashlights for the first time, all the effects, all the sound, all that. And, you know, I, I've been coming to Knott's a long time. I've only been working here for two or three years, but uh, I thought I was pretty immune to everything. And I have never shuffle step, like, skipped <laughs> through a maze so fast by myself and just got out the other side and was like, yep, that's good. Let's, yep, yep, let's open it up. Let's do it. It's a true story. During that walkthrough, like a book or something moved and can. Yes. I dropped the F bomb. Yeah. You dropped it. <laughs> it's there's no audio, there's no talent in there, and it scared him to death. It was great. <laughs> Which I wasn't allowed to do with the Walt Disney Company. If you're not familiar Pull with off. Walt Disney. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> What's the most frightened you've ever seen someone? Other than budget time. What's the most frightened you've ever seen someone? I was a talent for one year and I scared a guy and he kicked me in the balls. <laughs> and, then, and then he hugged me. <laughs> we have a pin that will commemorate that. <laughs> 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 
it's a headstone and it says Dan's testicles. <laughs> That's yeah. the scared I've ever, the most scared I've ever That pin will drop soon. <laughs> Don't laugh at that. <laughs> Don't laugh at that. The most frightened I've ever seen someone, if I can interject here, was, um, uh, was in uh, a little maze we did called Trapped, and uh, it, it was a girl who, who uh, wet herself, and it was the funniest thing I'd ever seen. <laughs> And we watched it, Scott, remember we watched it on video, we're like, she's going, it's going, there it is, yes, winner! How about you guys? Aww. Most frightened you've ever seen someone? I think um, we had the privilege of sitting back and watching the CCTVs in Trapped. It was oh, always fun yeah, it was to fantastic. watch people's reaction. So we were sitting there and somebody was genuinely freaking out in that, I don't remember, remember, remember it's the electrical room with the water that raised up. And they literally must have felt like they were trapped, so they got desperate to try and swing across by the fake wires that we zip tied to the ceiling. <laughs> Those are always enjoyable moments. <laughs> The, the, the great news they is they help though. <laughs> the great news is, is we've Did seen all those videos, so they exist somewhere. The big reveal is that we're watching you guys all the time <laughs> and laughing. That's also the most rewarding moments we have. We don't get paid in money. We just get paid in watching that. You get another hour in the room with the cameras. Okay. Do you have a favorite maze or scare zone character? If so, why are they your favorite? Oh, I got one. I'm gonna I'm gonna get points for this one. Better say the uh, prisoner. My wife used to be simple.